The red and white and starry blue is freedom, shield, and hope. John Philip Sousa. Hello and welcome back to the Wellhouse Exorcism. This is your ghost of host of the most, Shanna. Sup? And your name is? It's PJ. No, it's not. It's Puckwell PJ. There it is. <laughs> and we are with a special guest Woo! all the way from Texas. You are? Jennifer. 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 I'm <laughs> Jen <laughs> Jen. This is my step monster, and I love her so much. She is on her travels for the summertime, and she has stopped here in the well house, which is wonderful. The kids have loved it so much. And she is bringing her own stories from Texas. Mm -hmm. This is our special 4th of July episode, hence my quote. And I just want to say thank you for your service to our country. You're most welcome. Yes. So what's it like in Texas? Hot. <laughs> you have a future in podcasting. <laughs> the description you offer is amazing. <laughs> I think it's all an attitude. You know, you have people that are born and bred Texan like I am, and, and it's just, okay, it's summertime, it's hot. Get over it. You know, um, we, we complain more about cold weather than we do the hot weather. Yeah. Um, we don't like being cold, or at least I don't like being cold. Oh, my gosh. I remember when we came down to visit, and um, they're wearing a tank top and shorts to your farm. And, like, you and Dad are just, like, in long sleeves and jeans. I'm like, what is wrong with them? <laughs> it is so flipping hot. Uh -huh. And it wasn't even really hot yet. That's what you guys kept saying. We're like, no, nope, it's hot enough. We're going back up to Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a reason why I come to y'all at Fourth of July, because I don't want to sit in 110-degree weather <laughs> and watch fireworks and get eaten by mosquitoes. Hey, but yep. you came here and you had a tornado warning, so. I mean, come on now. I know. And you guys <laughs> ran and hid in the basement. I just sat there like, oh, okay. <laughs> we waited. I want to say that I ha I stayed on the porch most of the time. Oh, I know. I said, it's I was beckoned into the basement. Alex, or not Alex, Eli was worried. He's like, should we go in the basement? Like, your dad is on the porch with Alex. I'm pretty sure we're okay. <laughs> but when I heard that touchdown Nick change, I was like, all right, we're getting a little close. I think we should go in the basement now. Let's just go on downstairs. What's scarier, a tornado or the well? Eh. Pick and choose, pick and choose. Uh, I like it down here. I know. Thank you, exorcist priests. <laughs> <laughs> no. You noticed I didn't choose to stay down here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Hey, you're only down here for like 50 minutes, and then you can go back upstairs. Thank I'll you. I'll do your laundry. You're I, fine. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> you're welcome. If I continuously look over your shoulder at something, it's not... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we gotta go get some cats. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bar. He's just eyeing up his beautiful work. Anyway, so you are going to tell us some ama well, an amazing story from Texas, and mm -hmm. you um, lived it. So oh yeah, we, we I experienced this. her. So but I am going to first do a little touch up here with a uh, PJ and the Jersey Devil, little little connection. She just right. can't let it go, everyone. No, she yes. just can't let it go. <laughs> well, I'm on her side, so. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to give a shout out um, to our newest Twitter follower, which is hilarious. And PJ just started listening to your podcast. Today. I did. And, and uh, just want to say IPAs are terrible. Agreed. Was that part of the podcast? That, that's something they say in the first episode. Oh. There's... <laughs> I hate IPAs. Are gross. Yeah, I agree. It's like drinking a pine tree. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> but the Full Send Rejects, um, if you are interested, they're on Spotify. And they also are from Pennsylvania Ringtown, to be specific. So enjoy their spooky podcast. And apparently a discussion about IPAs. I appreciate that. So I am taking a story from the Big Book of Pennsylvania Ghost Stories by Mark Nesbitt and Patty A. Wilson. If Laura's Such listening. Such a great book. I said Mark Nesbitt, your boo. All right, that's just up for Laura, obviously. She'll hear it in a month. <laughs> She's up to date. I'm picking on her now. Anyway. You're welcome, Laura. So um, in the Philadelphia and Eastern Pennsylvania section, there is a story about Joseph Bonaparte. Hey! Yeah, so it, it's not about the Jersey Devil so much as it's about him and his connection to Pennsylvania now. All right? Okay. So long before there was the Margaret Grundy Memorial Library in mm. Bristol, there was a mansion that belonged to Sarah Lukens Keene, who happened to be the love of Joseph Bonaparte's life. Huh. There you go. Yeah. Apparently she was absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Had a great wit. Uh, was very intelligent. Piercing eyes. Uh, sounds just like somebody I know. 
a me. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, there was even a dual thought over her. So she had to be pretty, pretty good looking. That's all I'm saying. All right. Um, but she had <laughs> zero interest. Jen's in face is right <laughs> it's just, I'm like beauty standards back then. I'm like, mm. <laughs> Yeah, she had that 16 inch waist. Let's not talk about how she got it. <laughs> Do you see her ankle? It's fantastic. <gasps> oh my God. My God. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so when Napoleon's brother, uh, Joseph, came over here after Napoleon's defeat, of course, we know that he lived in Bordentown, New Jersey. He built his beautiful mansion. It overlooks the Delaware River. And that's where he creates a friendship with the Keene family because they were across the river in Pennsylvania. Well, apparently Bonaparte's mansion just sold like last year, by the way. All right. Well, yeah. we didn't buy it. For so. like a couple million, you know. <laughs> that's pocket change for <laughs> us. Um, but so he became good friends with the Keens because they were like across the street, but, you know, across the river. So he would constantly hop in his boat and float on down Delaware and hang out with them. So he and Sarah became really good friends. Obviously, he fell in love with her, but she was not in love with Joseph Bonaparte. And not because of his illustrious family member. Hmm. It's because she fell in love with a businessman from Philadelphia who ran a brewery, but he was below her station and daddy said no. Hmm. Yes. So she just was depressed. And her, it was rumored that when her dad said no, she never smiled again. And she no longer allowed herself to be courted. Indeed, no young men were welcome to call upon her. Only her friend Joseph Bonaparte was allowed to see the young woman, according to stories. Huh. Yep. And so she just lives out her life in the mansion. It becomes the Sarah Keene's mansion. And then she dies in 1866. And then she uh, left her house uh, at to the Episcopal Church to be used as a home for unmarried gentlewomen. Oh, wow. Which I think is pretty cool. So she survives the Civil War and then dies. <laughs> Sadly. She never got to see the Philadelphia Zoo open. If you look at our timeline. Yeah. It's very sad. Uh, but in any case, it is said that the Keene Mansion is haunted, which is why I'm mentioning this. And, of course, it's in the big book of Pennsylvania ghost stories. We should so talk about it sometime. I'm going to read the little section about the haunted spot spot spark sparks is the word the haunted spark the haunted spark in time the keen mansion gained a ghostly reputation there were footsteps heard and doors opened and closed on their own people witnessed dishes rattling in the cupboards and objects moving about caretakers rarely stayed long as they were unnerved by the firm steps of a woman who seemed to pace all night in the hallway others reported hearing footsteps on the path to the dock perhaps sarah walks there or is it joseph coming to visit his friend Wah, wah, wah. Um, others claim to hear the sounds of guns as doulas fight for Sarah's hand in marriage because she was good looking, Jen, obviously. At times, green lights danced through the empty rooms of the old Keene mansion and were viewed by frightened passersby. Uh, the green lights are associated with visits from Joseph, apparently. Um, they say Joseph also haunts the Delaware River. You can see his ghostly barge floating silently down to the side of the old dock where they used to be at the Keene mansion. And his boat is lit by a pale green glow and a ghastly lantern that is hooked to the front. So there you go. Huh. So even in the big book of Pennsylvania ghost stories, our Joseph Bonaparte makes um, a little little hippity hoppy surprise in there. I like to imagine he goes to visit Sarah and says, guess what I saw in the woods? The Georgia devil. And Sarah said, no. So rattling dishes, you say? Yes. Knock, knock. You ready? Go ahead. Who's there? Dishes. Dishes who? Dishes Sean Connery. <laughs> Come on, well, actually, was pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. That was pretty lame. <laughs> I think if his accent had been just a hair better, Yeah. He's off yeah, his game, but we'll give it to him. Yeah. It's been a long day. We had a tornado warning. <laughs> right. He's tired. <laughs> well, okay, so here's my question. Why do the ghostly lights, why are they always either blue or green? And then, like, the UFO ones tend to be more, like, white why can't they be pink or skinwalker ranch has red ones red and yellow they had purple too, and blue they? red yellow blue they had a purple light just a couple oh weeks ago. yeah on the show yeah, yeah. it hmm. was a purple one i wonder if it has to do with like technology hmm. i know that uv lights that they're saying um the one guy i think it was travis said that purple is like one of the h hardest colors to maintain and so it's really hot and then of course later they find these burn marks on the, the yeah. fence post so maybe Blue and green are easier to make and maintain. These are like maintained for ghosts. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah. Let's go find our aliens and ask them. Yes. Let's, Let's go. do it. <laughs> do it. Aliens, if you're listening. <laughs> no, trip. Say one. No, no Morse code. We'll just 
Send a message with a flashlight into the sky. <laughs> well, I will say this. I just got back from taking my nephew on a trip to New Mexico, and we stopped at Roswell oh. um, just because it's Roswell, of mm-hmm, course. Mm-hmm. And um, it's very interesting that one of the top tourist attractions, aside from, like, the UFO museum and everything, is the McDonald's what? because <laughs> it is shaped like a UFO. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, in fact, that was the thing he was the most excited about as, yeah. you know, was to go to the McDonald's that... Look like French a fries and a UFO. Oh, that's great. Right? Win. Exactly. Alex, we're losing mine because it gets French fries and it gets alien stuff. I mean, that's pretty cool. Well, yep. yeah, because the big playhouse thing is up inside of like Wait, this, seriously? Yeah, it's inside the spaceship part. Oh, nice. See, a lot of our area McDonald's have gotten rid of their play places because of insurance issues. Mm-hmm. It's a lot down. Yeah. You guys have to like Danville to play in one. Yeah, we have a couple. I can only think of Danville, really. In any mm. case, I want to hear about Texas stories. So you are born and raised Texas. Yes. My my family is, we can trace our lines back to the first 200 families that Stephen F. Austin brought into Texas. So my family has been either as a white settler or as a Native American um, in our history background. We've, we've been in Texas since the beginning. That's pretty cool. So, um, but in the Abilene area basically is where, you know, I sp- grew up high school year and, and everything. And when you do all your teenagery things, to get shenanigans. Troubles, you know, things that <laughs> I should probably not be alive. Um, <laughs> we actually talk about Abilene and what it looks like because it's so spread out there. Mm-hmm. Like you took us to like what, what must have been downtown Abilene mm-hmm. to go to the museum. Mm-hmm. And I remember looking at you and saying, Where's the traffic? Yeah, like, where's where, the where, city? Where does the city start? Yeah. <laughs> right. And and you guys, I think, even commented the fact of how wide our streets yes. were downtown. Yeah. And the reason that is is because back in Pioneer days and, and everything, they used to drive their cattle mm-hmm. through Abilene to the railroad station. And that was one of the reasons why our roads were so wide was to have room for the queues. I just liked your comment. We like it's Texas. We like to spread out down here. <laughs> everything's, <laughs> everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> I still don't believe that was a city. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what are some shenanigans you got up to as a teenager? Well, are these things we don't talk about. <laughs> right. Well, okay. So to, to clarify for for your listeners, um, I graduated high school in 1990. So you know, back in the midst of ancient time, um, and you know, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't. You know, our phone was. Still connected to the wall um, uh, and everything. So for fun, as teenagers, we would go cruising, and so you would either cruise the you know the main drag mm-hmm. there um, in downtown Abilene, or you would go out driving country roads and going to Lake Fort Phantom, which was about twenty miles away from Abilene, was one of our favorite pastimes because no, why was it called Fort Phantom? So the reason why it was called Fort Phantom is is actually initially the fort was a post, an army post that was um, set up for the settlers to be able to be protected from the Native Americans, mainly Comanche in our yeah, area, okay. um, from being attacked. And so... Um, there's when you travel through texas there's the texas fort trails and you can i mean we have all of these old army posts all over um for pioneer times and um ironically enough um lake fort phantom has one of these forts it wasn't called fort phantom in the beginning it was called uh, the post on the clear fork of the brazos that is wow a mouthful yes <laughs> Fort Phantom just rolls off the tongue better. <laughs> right. And so, um, you know, as, you know, the frontiermen went to, you know, the army to settle the area, typically back in pioneer times, when a fort was built, it flourishes and turns into a town. Well, evidently with the post of the Clear Fork of the Brazos, the officer who had nearly taken, had newly taken over his post got the position wrong. And where he was putting this post was horrible. The little creek that was running by was brackish. It had a lot of salt Mm. in the ground, um, and there were no trees. So most of the forts built with stone. They actually had to bring in oak trees from 40 miles away to use as timber. 
um, and the creek made it to where they couldn't really grow vegetable gardens. So it was horrible. The The post actually only was there for about four to five years before it was oh, finally. Geez. I'd be like, I'm out. Yeah, yeah and, and the conditions were so horrible that when they when the troops were leaving the, the post and marching out and they turned around, you know, that one last little, you know, oh, let's look at it. It was mm. on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so rumors, it, it goes back and forth whether or not the Comanche set it on fire or if it was a disgruntled soldier who was like, screw this. Yeah. I don't ever want this to be a possibility again. Um, but the the reason why it became Fort Phantom, um, there's two different reasons. Is Geographically, when you look at the fort, it's this big hill that just kind of sticks up. But when you like get closer to it, there is no hill. It's like it's disappeared, oh. and it's just ah. because of the way the ge- you know the geography is in the land. The second story is is that there was um, a soldier who was doing sentry duty at night, and he was rather nervous, and he thought he saw a uh, Comanche, and he shot. And so later on, his buddy went without him to go look for you know, what he shot at, and there was nothing there. They couldn't find any traces of, you know, Native Americans or anything, and so his buddy teased him that it was a ghost. And so that was, those are the two kind of ideas out there of why it's called Fort Phantom. It could have been a jackrabbit. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Jackalope. Jackalope. I think I mentioned it before on here, too, but we went to your friend's house, and there was a a jackrabbit under Mm -hmm. a tree out there, and I go, the heck is that? (laughs) And you're like, oh, it's a bunny. I'm like, that ain't nobody. <laughs> this thing's a monster. A <laughs> Remember, everything's bigger in Texas. I know. I, I, I was so angry, though. We were like 10 minutes into the Texan border from Arizona. Uh-huh. And like, seriously, 10 minutes in, Shannon goes, oh, an armadillo. I'm like, what? I missed it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, it is one of our favorite pastimes is to stop when the armadillo is dead and you pose it with an empty beer can or beer bottle and take your little pitcher and... Yeah, here in PA, people put get well soon balloons on deer. (laughs) (laughs) Back home, they pick them up. Um, Oh, yeah, they do that here, too. Yeah, Yeah, if they're fresh. So, um, but yeah, so yeah, we we have, and in fact, that friend's house is that's where you got to encounter your longhorns. Yes. Yes. Longhorn. It was so, um, yeah, so. They were awesome. awesome. Fun. They're, really they're cool. beautiful. Oh yeah, it's just kind of deceiving at first. You're like, oh yeah, they're they're cows, and then you walk up to them and you're like, don't stab this me. Is, this is a big, <laughs> big boy. <laughs> they're eight feet from that point of that horn to that point of that horn. Oh goodness, they're almost as big as a jackrabbit. <laughs> <laughs> and to see him just like manhandling, well, not manhandling, oh, but yeah. you know, just like roughhousing with them, like, oh, oh yeah. don't do that. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, our, our good friends that own the Longhorns, they they are considered pets by other ranchers in the area. They because they are overweight. Oh, like my, my potato dog. Yes, your potato dog. Potato. Post a picture of her on Facebook. No, she's not a potato. Our, our little, she is our potato, potato dog. dog. <laughs> Especially when she tries to jump. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, back to Fort Phantom. Okay, so no Fort potatoes. Phantom. Right. So <laughs> at the time of when they made the fort, there was no lake. The lake is a man-made or engineered lake. Um, it was developed um, in the late 1937, you know, part of that Roosevelt, you know, mm-hmm. economy. Give, you know, the people something to do, pay them. And so the, the lake was developed by combining several area creeks and damming them. And that's how we got the lake to support the population of... Abilene that was, you know, 20 miles away and local area farmers and whatnot. And so that's how the lake came about is it was a man-made entity. Hmm. Um, And so interestingly enough, when I was studying uh, for my story to make sure I was getting my story straight as far as like the background and everything. We um, appreciate that. (laughs) (laughs) We do it all the time. That's our job on this podcast. (laughs) All right. I noticed in one of the things that in the history wise that I, I was reading is that none of the sightings of like ghosts and phantoms and spirits and everything in the area, that none of it was Native American originating. It, oh. uh, it all came from the white settlers coming through the huh. area that they started first. In fact, one of the first stories was started in 1851 when the fort was being built. So I thought that was, you know, very interesting that yeah. the Native Americans, the Comanche and everything, who are very spiritual people and, and whatnot, 
that they didn't have any stories as far as I've been yeah. able to find about this particular area. But all And then we move in. And, <laughs> and then the white settlers move in and all of a sudden it's, you know, it's, it's you know, being haunted and, and one thing you know, and another. What's funny is we had mentioned on a previous podcast is we've actually been working on Native American lore mm-hmm. up here because we have Lenny and Lenape and mm-hmm. everything up here. Um, we had mentioned that a lot of these stories that we have that, come after Native Americans, it's because there's like this like white settler guilt because we know that we took their land, we hurt mm-hmm. them, we had big massacres. Mm-hmm. And so we have these haunted stories over like Native American burial grounds and stuff because mm-hmm. people were literally like, you know, grinding up the in- the grounds and turning them like into farming area. Mm-hmm. So like that's like guilt almost. So maybe that could be part of it, but I don't know. It's a cool connection. I mean, oh yeah. Again, it like, was yeah. just, it was something that I noticed when I was, <laughs> when I was researching, it was, you know, cause you know, digging and I was like, wait, that didn't start until, you know, yeah. we entered the scene. Um, that I've Texas been able to find. was a pre- like. When did Texas become a state? Oh, don't get me lying. I know I should know. Like, well, no, but I was just wondering because, like, 1851, you guys were probably they were building forts still, right? Because you're still manifest destiny at that point, right? Well, those forts and everything that were being built. Um, this particular fort is when Texas is part mm-hmm. of when you know because Texas has <laughs> funny enough six flags. Eighteen forty-five. Thank 45? you. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm horrible with dates. That's why I have my notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because uh-huh. I'm horrible well, I'm just, with I'm years. Just like, you know, we're still spreading out across the United States. You know, because that was still happening during the Civil War. Yes. But. Oh yeah. Yeah. In fact, the 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 derelict fort that was left and everything had been used after. After the pioneer times, it was actually used by the Confederate soldiers. Oh, okay. Um, as a stopping post, along with like the stagecoach mm-hmm. and the postal and and one thing mm-hmm. and another. So, um, this, but yeah, years to ADHD. What <laughs> I just know <laughs> the fun stuff. Um, but um, yeah, at that time, Texas was part of the Union. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, part of the Confederate States anyway at that point. Yeah. Um, and so. Um, yeah, so it was rather rather interesting. So anyway, so you're no, gonna edit out all my blah, 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 blah. no Comanches stories. Interesting. No, not that I've been able to find. I mean, I have family wise, I have Comanche stories because, like <laughs> I said, our families are some of the first families to come in. And one of my how many ever great you know grand grandparents, um, they were pine you know settlers in that area, and um, the dad had come in and told the wife get the children and go in the house and there were Comanche up in the trees waiting to steal the women to take them for slaves. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that story had been handed down, you know, for years, you know, is that for that side of the family. And then my great, great, great grandmother was Cherokee. Um, she was part Cherokee and she wouldn't eat mushrooms because she said they tasted like flesh. Uh, oh my! And I was like, I don't want to know this story. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really don't want to know this story. My my mom has it. It's um, what are those? A tin plate or one of those old fashioned pictures mm-hmm. uh, of one of like our great great whatever grandmothers? Mm-hmm. Because my mom comes from Cherokee as well, and that was taken when they were on the Trail of Tears, actually. Mm-hmm. So she wasn't smiling. <laughs> she oh wasn't no! Happy. Oh yeah. yeah. So anyway, okay. Let us hear your story. Okay, so the origination of of the encounter of the the way the spirit was created, um, and ironically, it comes from one of my most favorite part you know times of history is World War II. Um, so we have the Lady of the Lake, Lady of Fort Phantom, and I've encountered her. And not Merlin's friend, no Excalibur. No, 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 I was not, a you know, sword did not come out of the, the water, and I was not, you know. I give you an 8 out of 10 so Just got to try asking nicely. Right, yeah. <laughs> so if first, if, since the, the time of the incident where this spirit was created, um, people, I can remember, you know, through my lifetime and up until my experience that, there we would report of a woman walking on the shore, um, fog coming up and around you suddenly, your headlights flickering, the smell of decay, um, dogs freaking out, just snapping mm-hmm. for no reason. Um, and so it was, you know, as a high schooler doing stupid things, one of our favorite pastimes was going out and, and goofing off at the lake and trying Obviously. to... Trying to end We like to call this, it sounds quite spoopy. It's spoopy? It's spoopy. Okay. It's spoopy. So <laughs> quite spoopy. 
But Very spoopy. <laughs> let me tell you how her spirit originated because it's, like I said, it comes from my t- my favorite time. So this is in the mid-40s, like right at, they're at the end of World War II or right after World War II it ended. And Mona Bell was the name of the young lady. Um, she was to meet her boyfriend at Lake Fort Phantom. Uh, they were going to run away and elope. And um, she was there waiting for him. And he was in the process of getting ready to go to her. And one of his buddies, his friend, jokingly said he had taken care of Mona Bell, quotation fingers around, taken care of for him while he was away fighting the war. And so this threw him into a rage. And when he got to the lake and Mona Bell runs to, you know, runs to him, Bell Romantic, he strangles her. And throws so her. Mona did not moan. No. Okay. No. <laughs> Just so, checking. No, some yeah. might say she croaked. <sighs> I can't take you anywhere. <laughs> That's I mean, how could I not say yeah, that? Yeah, we did softball that one up there to you. <laughs> so, um, and so people in the area say that she wasn't dead when she hit the water, that they could actually hear her screaming until she drowned. And so, hold up. There are people there. And she's being killed, and he's like, let it happen. I was not born yet. I cannot <laughs> testify as I to... saw the bubbles coming up. Well, then why don't you jump in? Yeah. These stories, man. Anyway. Bystander effect. I guess. Kitty, Kitty Genovese. She had that kind, a, of, oh, okay. that kind of deal. Yeah, that yeah. story. Mm. So, I mean, it could be they heard it, and they were just trying to add in, you know, their oh, yeah, for minutes sure. fame or whatever. Yeah. So, but um, ironically enough, the young man... Um, he ran off but died mysteriously later on. Hmm. And so I really wasn't able to find out any more as far as his name and who he was. We just all know about, you know, Mona yeah. Bell. So ever since then, people have reported her, like I said. And so, you know, as a young young teenager in high school with nothing to do but, you know, cause mischief, <laughs> um, we would go out to the lake. And one of our favorite pastimes was to play chicken in our vehicles on the dam on moonless nights. (laughs) So one car would be at one end of the dam, the other car would be at the other, we'd turn off our headlights, and we'd drive towards each other. What's the worst that could happen? Right? (laughs) I'm imagining this right now. Okay. So, and I mean, okay, so... (laughs) That's a great idea. Yeah, so... (laughs) What year is it? I want to picture, like, the style of car. Um, this is, like... 88, 87. Okay. I mean, we're, we're just born. Yeah. Yeah. I'm imagining Jen with like. Oh, yeah, because you graduated hair. high school in 90, you said. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. I, I can show you a picture of me back then. I thought I was Molly Ringwald. I was like, had the hats and the That's hair, fantastic. flock of seagulls kind of so thing you going had, on. You had like bright red hair, right? In that time? No, then it was brown. Brown. Yeah. It was, it was brown, it was my natural hair color. But I mean, I was lovingly back then, before, you know, got to understand I'm Generation X, you know. And so um, I was called a new waver, which is the precursor to your emo in your punk. Mm -hmm. So, um, but anyway, so out there, nothing better to do than to play chicken on the dam on a moonless night. And um, we were getting ready to go. We started our car, started moving forward. And the next thing I know, Mona Bell standing in front of our car. And the guy. Was she good looking? No. Oh. No. She was, <laughs> I did not see, you know, below her waist because, you know, you're car. Oh, the car, yeah. yeah. And you got to realize our headlights are not on. Yeah, so you're seeing her naturally. I'm seeing her naturally. There is no moonlight. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's pitch black outside, but here's this white ethereal. All mm-hmm. right, but is her head like down her hair is like all dripping wet and like in front of her face? Like, is it kind of like the ring? No. No, okay. No, she was actually like that, you know, World War II typical, you know, girl quaffed and oh. and all of that. But she put her hands out like this. And, like a kind of stop motion. Yeah, stop motion. And we slammed on our brakes and we backed up off of the dam. Mm-hmm. The guys on the other side saw her, too, doing the same thing to them. Oh, she, knock it off is what she was saying. Yeah, so in, we had to meet up in town because Lake Fort Phantom is huge. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a pretty big lake. And so they went one way and we went the other way. And we met up in town. And, I mean, we were like... You so you had the exact same story? Yes. They saw the exact same thing at the exact same time. And there's no such thing as cell phones really back. I mean, there were no. no, no. That was was why we had to go all the way back into town and meet up. 
is because there was no like, oh, hey, yeah. you know, let me call you up. Oh. There's no, I mean, we had nothing but us. And, and so that was, that was my, oh my experience gosh. with Mona Bell. And so to this day, I won't go out to Fort Phantom at night. That's so crazy. I won't go out there at night. I'll go out there during the day and take the kids swimming and have a yeah. good time. But if it's nighttime, I will not go out there. Yeah. At all. So then, like, she has to be real then, right? Like, as far you, as you I'm think, concerned, like, she is real. urban legends. But like, if you're if you're we're considering we're talking her. to someone who saw her firsthand, that's why I'm making the comment, PJ. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, usually it's you know it's we usually debunk and we go it's an urban legend. Like with mm-hmm. the the heck with Hecktown that that episode, oh, yeah. we kind of discussed like how nothing was real there, and we did like the cult house and like all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And you can easily debunk a lot of things, but I mean. If you and both we were saw her at the exact same time. Yeah, like, and we yeah. were sober. To yeah, that, and you know? we were sober. Yeah. It wasn't like you know we were teenagers out at the lake drinking or anything. No, well, we were sober. Even we if were you just were all drunk, you had a collective like. <laughs> <laughs> ep- yeah. I mean, experience. we were just out there to you know get into trouble like dangerously. <laughs> we were deliberately doing dumb things. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. You know, were, were they living deliciously? <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, it's, you know, with my culture, fool around and find out, you know, so yeah, it was, but yeah, so yeah, to this day, I will not go out there and um, I get shivers and cold chills every time I talk about the story. Um, oh, no, when you mentioned to us, you like had goosebumps. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, oh my gosh, that's has anyone crazy. else like shared their, I guess anyone else in your friend group or like family or people you've known, have they seen her too? Just the, my group of friends that I was with at the time. Um, we were the ones that saw him and I mean, it's like, we had our little powwow discussion and like, man, did you see that? Oh my God, that was crazy. And da 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 da. And then it was like, that was it. We're not going to talk about it anymore. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, like, how many of you were in each car? Uh, there were two guys in the other car and there was me and the guy I was okay. dating, with, yeah. you know, loosely dating <laughs> at the time. Um, and we were all in high school and it was, you know, it was a Saturday night. We didn't have anything better to do than to go play chicken out on the dance. So did she look wow. the same for both of you guys? Or did you describe like her hair and her clothes and like you all matched the discussion? Or? And pretty much basically it was, you know, I have yet to find those, you know, cause you know, typical of Abilene teenagers, you know, you, you, you want to leave Abilene. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm of the group. I'm the only one that has returned <laughs> to Abilene. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, everybody's kind of gone their own separate ways. So I haven't met up with, you know, these because they were a year older than me. And, and mm-hmm. so like, the, you know, yeah, I was a, I was a bad girl. Yeah, it sounds and like it. Cool. <laughs> I was a bad So, um, I, you know, I don't know why she, she stopped us the way she did. You know, she did, hadn't stopped us from like doing other stupid stuff out of the lake that we used to do like yeah. you know stand on the hood of the car on the front of the and drive towards the lake and hit the brakes and we would go flying into the water <laughs> you know we were never stopped by her then maybe um, she just got sick of it she's like you know what I'm done. <laughs> i wonder if she There's... thought you guys were gonna actually hit her like oh. <laughs> or, you know she's like you know jealous of her her area she didn't want any more ghosts out there or anything <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she's like the person in the apartment below who like deals with the sound for a song and then grabs the broom and like smack and it's like knock it off now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's just done. Yeah, she's done with us. Yeah, we were oh we were so stupid back then. But yeah, and so but yeah, collectively when we met up at the Sonic and you know, we were all like <laughs> drinking our Dr. Peppers and just like oh, did you yeah I saw did you yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> it's real <laughs> it was real um yeah yeah it was. It was pretty freaky. Did she follow like either of you guys home or no? Never, no. Home? I mean, as soon as we backed up, I mean, like we shot backwards. As soon as he like crap, he threw it in reverse, and we started backing up. And but he didn't turn his headlights on until we were off the dam because mm-hmm. we were we were maybe five six yards onto the dam. Yeah. You know, we were just started to get ready to go. You know, yeah. we were going to play chicken. Who's going to check it out? Because <laughs> um, you can't see <laughs> until you see shiny. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I will say it is a two lane dam. I mean, it's like it's got two way traffic on it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we had plenty of room to dodge each other. If we <laughs> managed to have time to swerve before we <laughs> crunched into each other. How many times have you played this chicken game before she was sick of you? That's the question. Oh, that's a good question. 
maybe five or six times. Jeez oh Louise. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't tell you how many times we did the whole drive out and, and off launch the, off the car. Our, yeah, into the, I mean, because it was the boat dock, so you'd, and you'd hit the brakes. and. <laughs> <sighs> Note to self, she's the cool grandmother. But we got to make sure that we get. Didn't like, we know this already? But like, we got to make sure that we have like the insurance cards in her pocket uh, yeah. when she takes our kids out. <laughs> hey, Sophie, let's go shoving. <laughs> so. Want you back before dark? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's an awesome story, though. Do you have any other ghost stories? Is that your big ghost story? That's my big. I mean, we've got like you know, you have the family house um, in Albany that like. You know, a couple of ancient family members had passed away in, mm-hmm. and so we always had the front bedroom that all of the cousins we swore was haunted um, because nobody wanted it was like dark and scary <laughs> yeah. and, and all of that. Um, but um, of the women in our family, um, we outlive our husbands, and so all of like my great aunts and 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 my grandmother and everything, um, they talk about their husbands who have passed away have come and visited them, like, and said, you know, it's okay, or it's your time, or whatever. We have those stories that are that are passed down, you know, generationally mm-hmm. within the family. But as far as, like, spooky freak me out, and still, you know, when I'm almost 51, still giving me goosebumps, you know, it's, it's, this, it's the lady of the lake that hmm. just... Doesn't. Well, and my basement, apparently. You don't want to be down here. No, I don't. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, just I mean, even the attic freaks me out, you know. Was... So the house has been exercised. Right. And so it's, t- I mean, even I'm down here. And you know my story with the basement. I was afraid yeah. to be down here. Yeah. So what is it about that that still bothers you? Probably the stigma. The stigma of it? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, and it's just, it's, okay, so I start was thinking about this. So this area, you know, because I went and saw my dad up in New York and up in the area and, and the way your roads are and the houses are right <laughs> on the road. And I get it, you know, carriage roads and one thing and another. Now, PJ mentioned that, too, like how the first time that you came up with Patrick and I think Austin, they were surprised at how close the, the houses were to the road. Like, that's not a thing down in Texas. No. Well, yeah. and you saw that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys saw that. Everybody that's you got some nice it's front It's funny lawns. you said yeah. that again because yeah. PJ mentioned it. <laughs> but continue. Sorry. Right. It's so all crazy roads. Right. So, and your history, I mean, granted, American history is not old by any comparison Mm -hmm. to, like, when you look at Europe and China and one thing and another. But but your history is older than our history in Texas. Yeah. And so um, I think that's, you know, maybe part of it. You know, there's a lot more violence that has happened in this area because you guys, the white settlers have been Mm -hmm. here longer and, you know. There were a lot of massacres in this area. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately. And so, um, you know, and you got your rolly hills and your dark corners and old forests and all of that and overactive, you know, ADHD imagination. <laughs> I'm just like, I need to go back to my wide open plain spaces, you know, <laughs> you honk your horn three times and, a, you know, ball of light goes floating by or whatever, you know, story happens to be, you know, Marfa lights, Anson lights, they're all out there. Um, but, um yeah, no, it's it's freaky. <laughs> I actually teach my students about the Marfa lights. Yeah, that's one of my lessons. Like for we have like an I ready lesson, mm-hmm. and we discuss the Marfa lights in in detail. Actually, yeah, yeah. Well, they actually have like a whole observing area out there now because I go up to Fort Davis a lot. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite places to go camping, and Marfa's just you know right there, um, you know because. As you experience in Texas, for us to drive five hours <laughs> is nothing. <Yeah. laughs> you know, I'll drive to San Antonio, which is five hours away, visit my kid for three hours, and drive five hours home, and it's nothing. Yeah. And you guys are like, no. We drove three and a half hours to New Jersey, and I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marfa lights, uh-huh. have you seen them? No, I've been out there. I've, I've sat there and tried to observe them and and whatnot and and no i have not witnessed them um so okay there's the anson lights are kind of the same thing the other side of abilene um that was debunked as you know it was headlights reflecting you know traffic yeah um and so um you know the light floaty light thing i've never i've never encountered just the haunty that so you my, know consciously right maybe you have been taken up by the grays um, oh, my question for you okay uh it's our 
well, it's my favorite urban legend. Still out, if I believe it or not. Uh, I was going to ask this. We were inconclusive when we did our episode on it. It originated our, our from Abilene. Mm -hmm. uh, two years ago, when we were, when you were up here last, you said you had never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if now that you have heard of it, if, like, you know, it, you noticed you other about people. the kids? Black-eyed kids, the yeah. The black-eyed kids. So I did research that. It's Abilene. funny okay. because it. she keeps saying Abilene. I'm like, I want to ask her about the news reporter <laughs> in Abilene. Like, that's <laughs> right. so crazy. <laughs> right. So I did some research on that after you had asked me if I had ever heard of them. Um, and, you know, I had never experienced them. But in my research, I found it wasn't – and, and ironically enough, where this person reported seeing them – is, you know, I mean, we used to go to the movies there all the time. Mm -hmm. So I never experienced them. And then there's some people who talk about having seen them at the railroad tracks. And because okay. Abilene is, you know, divided yeah. uh, by railroad tracks, active railroad I tracks. I remember those tracks. Yeah. yeah. And so there's been a couple of reports of them there. But it's such a modern urban legend yeah yeah it's only like 30 years old yeah and i mean within my lifespan and mm -hmm. had would have happened when i when was you were a teenager yeah and in that area going mm -hmm. to the movie theater and one yeah, thing and another sure. in the parking lot that it supposedly happened um sorry supposedly <laughs> quotation fingers are flying um <laughs> <laughs> so you the, do i believe in the no i don't do yeah. i believe that there are but, but like have you noticed like has it have you noticed it no. or heard about it in no n not, around town? Or no, anything? not at all. And I mean, you know, we have there's a couple of buildings in Abilene that are supposed to be haunted. Mm -hmm. um, the Weather Bureau office. There's a lawyer's office that they report. You know, seeing you know specters and stuff. And I would more believe them than yeah. I would this modern tale of yeah these black eyed children. I do find them fascinating though. I, just even as a work of fiction, I think it's one of the coloest things ever. Because kids but. are creepy anyway. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> let's right. be honest. <laughs> so, yeah, even if it's fake, which it probably is, like, I still love it. I love that whole mythology around right. them yeah. and everything. Um, I got a book, and I just fell in love with one writer, Kevin Paul. He's my, my super best friend. Um, and we actually Zoomed with him, and mm -hmm. we posted his, um, his Zoom with us. And uh, one of his stories actually was a black-eyed kid story here in Pennsylvania, but he discusses what happened in Abilene. But we also have the blue-eyed people up here, too. So it's a Scandinavian kind of story. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, look at that. There's two of them. That's yeah. kind of cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Black-eyed kids scare me. Children in the corn scare me, too. Right. <laughs> all of them scare me. Right. <laughs> Just kids in general scare me. Yeah, I think we can all agree that of all of the specters out there and spirits and everything, children are probably, to me, the most scary is, you know. Oh, in, even in terms of physical beings, our children are creepy. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and they're, that's, I mean, one of the reasons why I call my grand spawn. So. <laughs> well, when the tornado was happening, we're down here in the basement because tornado warning, and Alex is just destroying the train set. Like, it's just a mess down here still. I took a picture of him going, cheese, and I sent it to my mom, and I'm like, look, I found the tornado, category Alex, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, well, those are lovely stories, um, lovely as in real and scary, and I love it because <laughs> I love scary stuff. I love that you are creeped out by the basement because one of the biggest comments we get from our listeners is, I can't believe you're sitting in the basement right now. Like Jackie said that during our, uh -huh. our Zoom during session. During our Zoom. She's like, I can't believe you're in the well house right now. And so we took her on a live tour of her <laughs> Zoom. Like, hey, here's this, here's this. Yeah. It doesn't look scary anymore, but here's this. Right. Well, something I said to Jackie, too, when we were talking with her is like, I will spend hours down here just doing whatever, you know, but I still won't watch, like, scary movies down here and things like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i can't i just can't i can't bring myself to that well it's like i ever wondered you know do you guys like not do certain things because yeah. you're afraid you might reactivate yes yeah there will never be definitely. a ouija board in this house obviously yeah one um, time we bought rune stones uh because i was like oh rune stones they're really cool and then i like you know they came with like little instructions and it's like you know you want to make sure that they are um 
neutralized of all energies and you know you want to cleanse them for i'm like this is sounding a little too a little too much for this house <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> don't want to bring that into the house nope right. nope well even when we were talking he, i didn't realize we still had the dowsing rods we got in savannah right or they're there, right over there yeah, yeah i'm like they're still here we why still would, have dowsing rods why would you have here? them in this house <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it. something else i won't mess with yeah they're, yeah. they're there but i won't yeah. mess with them we still do a lot of prayer we still have our prayer station upstairs mm-hmm. i like candles and we're yeah. Yeah. We're good the holy water. Uh, you didn't hear the story, but I did tell us on, the, on a previous podcast, one night we're upstairs and it's quiet in the living room. And I mean, like you could hear a pin drop. And Sophie and Eli are quietly sitting side by side, sharing popcorn and like whatever they're doing. Watching a quiet. movie or whatever. And I'm like, the heck? So I go in the kitchen, I grab a bottle of holy water and I walk in and I just spray them. <laughs> and they go, why are we wet? And I go, I'll oh, just check in. Just check in. <laughs> Carry on. Our popcorn's wet. Good. <laughs> Does it taste bad now? Put <laughs> in your mouth. Tell me if it burns. <laughs> no. All right. Well, everyone out there, I hope you enjoyed this special edition for our 4th of July holiday. Please be careful and make good choices. I know that in Pennsylvania, and especially rural Pennsylvania, we like to light our firecrackers. Please do so mindfully. All right. Don't go to the ER. We don't want that. <laughs> it happens enough around here. Um, please enjoy the 4th of July. Take care of your family. And as always, until next time, think creepy thoughts. Mm-hmm.